So which one of these is for you? The 25, the 30, the 35. Let's talk price, aesthetics. Let's talk size. Let's talk functionality. Let's talk resale value. All of the good stuff. Which one? Let's review them. Let's compare them. And in the end, I'm going to tell you my favourite. So let's get going. Hi guys. So we're talking Battle of the Birkins. The Birkin 25, the 30, the 35. I am very fortunate to have all three. So I do have a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of experience of each one of them. And I'm here to tell you there is one clear favourite for me. So these bags are notoriously hard to get, aren't they? They are incredibly difficult. So whether you are thinking of pre-loved, whether you are thinking of trying your luck in the store, I was very fortunate to get all mine from the store. However, I do know how difficult it is. But hopefully this video will give you a little bit of information on which is the right one for you because they are so hard to see in real life. So when you are deciding to go down the pre-love route, whether you are going into store and trying to set up a wish list, how do you know which one to put on your wish list? You can't get hold of the bags in order to even make a decision. So you can't try them on or anything else. It's really, really difficult. So hopefully this video is a little bit of information to help you decide which is the right one for you. So let's start with the little baby Birkin. So this is my Birkin 25, it's in the colour Rouge Granat, which is a beautiful, beautiful deep red. It's coming up slightly brighter on screen than it is, but it is a beautiful, beautiful red. It is in Togo leather and I went for gold hardware. I think gold with red. The Birkins are all top handle. They're all top handle. They are not shoulder bags. You do not get a crossbody strap or shoulder strap. There is a harness coming out, I don't know if it's out already, that actually comes over the bag and it makes it into a shoulder bag. I don't know. I have no idea if that's useless, good. I have no idea. It's just a way for them to sell something extra, I am sure. However, yeah, these are literally top handle bags. So let's have a look inside. It's one, one compartment, a slip pocket at the front, and you can see that a zip pocket at the back. There's nothing on the back. It's all there. You can see it's very triangular shaped. And then obviously underneath it's got the four feet. So that is the composition of the Birkin. All three are the same. They're just, yeah, they're just all in proportion with the size of the bag. So obviously the slip pocket in this one is smaller than the slip pocket in the others. As you would expect, there's nothing different about them. The main difference with the Birkin 25 is it is literally a top handle bag. Now you can get your hand through and I can get this pretty much part way up my forearm and then you have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to get your hand back out. So for me, it's really, a, yeah, it's a top handle. It's a handheld bag. You can, as I say, do that just to get it off yeah just to be hands-free a little bit but it's definitely not a crook of the arm bag at all it just isn't so that is the one difference if you like compared to the other two the other two are definitely crook of the arm so let's talk about price and resale value at the same time with this this is the cheapest of the three birkins if you're buying direct from store and it's the cheapest because of the, I suppose, it, the amount of material of leather, the amount of time, labour that goes into this from the artisan. Obviously, it depends on the leather that you choose and all of that. That the price depends on, on the leather, on the hardware, whether you've got any exotic, whether you've got a touch of ex exotic, all of that changes the price. So when you're talking resale, it's actually a different story. Some of these can cost so much more than the bigger Birkins on the resale market. And that is purely supply and demand. These are really sought after. They're incredibly hard to get from the store. And yeah, so that makes it just very, very, very desirable. All the Birkins are desirable, but I think at the moment it's changing and we'll talk about the big ones in a minute. But at the moment, the smaller ones are for sure still fetching crazy resale amounts. They really, really are. So 
as an investment it's a really really good one i don't buy any of my bags for that i don't want to sell any of my bags but it is a nice comfortable thought that if i wanted to or if i had to then yeah it is actually quite a sound investment let's quickly talk about functionality versatility usability it holds a lot this yeah it's 25 because it's 25 centimeters this way this is a decent sized bag you can fit in a big makeup bag long wallets or you can fit so much into this it really really does hold a lot as i said the only downside to it is how you have to hold it so the actual i suppose practicality of it it does hold a lot it really really does it's extremely versatile so you could use this because of the size of it you could use this during the day absolutely no problem yes you can't be hands-free but you can't be fully hands-free with any of them so none of them are crossbody. but this one you can fit everything and anything you want for the day and you can also use this in the evening it's not too big that it looks like i think you can use any of them whenever i think the birkin looks amazing with every outfit but yeah this does lend itself a little bit more to evening doesn't it so this is extremely usable functional practical it's amazing overall conclusion on this one aesthetically stunning it's stunning i adore it i love how yeah how you can change the look of the birkin you can pull it in you can bring the flap over oh it's just absolutely beautiful aesthetically the price of them in the store yes they're ridiculous but i'm sorry compared to to chanel where the classic flap is now in the jumbo sizes over nine thousand i think it's nine thousand two hundred and something pounds this was nowhere near that nowhere near that so yeah thousands less honestly so for me yeah the price is crazy however for the quality and everything else resale value is absolutely off the charts it's functional it's versatile oh it's just i love it there's no real downside apart from i just wish they made the hand the handles a little bit bigger so i could get my my hands in there and i could if i could wear this on the crook of my arm i think this would be the absolute perfect bag that is the only downside and i think making that slightly bigger would not change the aesthetic of this ah oh, so i just wish they'd done that the only other downside of this is it's so hard to get so hard to get let's move on to the birkin 30. so this is again in togo leather this is in etoupe again with the gold hardware etoupe always comes with the contrast stitching now i've actually put the flap and the angles across fully just so you can see what it looks like compared to when it's fully open because i just want to show this that they are they look quite different i think when they're open and close so i like the fact that you can change the look of it by yeah the way that you use the hardware and the sangles now this makes it obviously very very secure so that is another very good thing on the birkin now that makes it extremely fiddly to get in and out of but there are times where you literally just want to be fully secure so yeah that that is a really 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 good element of the birkin so i've just opened this back up because this is the way i prefer to wear it i just love the slouchy look of it i just really like that so in terms of the birkin 30 obviously this is 30 centimeters across this way it just means it's a bigger bag obviously the inside is exactly the same as the 25 just in proportion and the one thing just to note is the hardware is bigger on the 30 than it is on the 25 again just in proportion to the bag so i'm going to do some side by side comparisons so you can see um but yeah it's just a much bigger bag so let me show you in comparison to the 25 so that five centimeters of 25 versus 30 does actually make quite a big difference you can see the sides there and you can see the back and it makes a difference on the height the depth everything is bigger the hardware the handles you can see here the handle drop on this one compared to this one so this is definitely crook of your arm absolutely no problem 
yes it does add a little bit of weight to the bag the fact that the handles feel thicker sturdier the bag is bigger it obviously has more leather it is slightly heavier but it still feels this feels super light this feels quality beautiful it doesn't feel too heavy so that just shows you in comparison um there we go so the functionality versatility practicality are all the same with this it's a super practical bag now i have done a video which i will link up here which is 10 reasons 10 <laughs> not five 10 reasons why you should buy a birkin so i'm not going to go through all of those reasons in this video but go watch that one but yeah, it's very functional. It's just even more functional and practical, I think, than the 25, just because it can go on the crook of your arm. You can fit a little bit more in it. It's a definite perfect bag for during the day. You can still use this in the evening. I don't care, actually. I would use all of them in the evening. I just love the look of them. So there's no reason why you can't use this in the evening. It's beautiful. It fits a lot in. It's not going to fit in maybe a laptop but it probably would fit in um an ipad a large agenda all those types of things fit in here absolutely no problem yes it makes it heavier but that's just it that's just it we put a load of things in it of course it's going to be heavy okay quickly price and resale price yeah again this is somewhere in between the two price wise if you're buying direct from store as you would expect on the resale market these vary they really really do um i think some of the classic colors such as a tube or noir or yeah maybe a tan those sort of colors always tend to do really really well because people just want neutrals don't they it's a bigger market so yeah they do vary but the resale value of all the birkins are crazy so yeah i don't think that should be a deciding factor in which one you choose how easy is this one to get from store it's it's sort of all of them are notoriously difficult to get aren't they they are really really difficult to get at the moment i would say the bigger birkins are still slightly easier to get slightly i think if you wanted a mini kelly or kelly 25 they are crazy they are they are crazy to get but when you're talking birkins the Birkin 25, I think, is still quite hard to get. The 30 and the 35 are a little bit, a little bit easier, maybe. Don't think it makes a difference. Should make a difference to your decision. Okay, and let's get on to the Birkin 35. So this is a really, really big bag. Obviously, it's 35 centimeters this way. And again, man is in the noir with the gold. I just wanted the absolute classic the Birkin 35 so again I like the slouchy look you can pull it in you can put the flap over you can wear this in different ways it is exactly the same again inside just on a much bigger scale you can see it's got a really big zipper pocket and you can see the handles are again you can nearly get this on your shoulder not quite maybe if you're more petite than me but it is yeah it's a very easy crook of the arm bag it is heavy let me show you compared to the birkin 30 so again you can see the extra five centimeters the 30 compared to 35 does make a big difference again on the height the depth the handles everything in proportion is bigger so i think the hardware looking at this i think the hardware is the same size hardware but that essentially, yeah, it makes this one look really small, doesn't it? So, and let me show you compared to the Birkin 25. So you can see why they call it the baby Birkin because it's absolutely tiny, isn't it, compared to the 35. So there you, there you are. There's the side profile of them and the back. But the underneath is just so much smaller, isn't it? And this, you can see the handles this is so heavy it's actually just holding it up here it's like you know doing a little bit of my strength training here this is super light this already empty it's heavy so there you can see how it does compare to the other two so yeah functionality versatility usability 
you could say it's even more practical even more versatile you could fit a laptop in it you can you could use this a lot more easily for travel but then the fact that it's so big and heavy and the fact it doesn't have a shoulder strap does that make it slightly less practical because it's heavy and yeah you can't it is literally handheld and crook of the arm and it does get incredibly heavy if you're using it for any length of time so there's part of it that makes it more practical part of it that makes it less practical or versatile in my opinion usability you can use this it's just stunning isn't it you can use this anytime i've used this in the evening before i don't care i don't think big bags are only for the day and i don't think small bags are only for the evening i think you can do take whatever you want so i have used this in the evening before i'm not going to use this to go to a cocktail party with a fancy dressed i don't mean a fancy dress <laughs> with a fancy dress <laughs> but anyway <laughs> so yeah i wouldn't use it for a cocktail party <laughs> i'd use a little clutch for that but going out for dinner or something yeah i would definitely use this because i literally love them so yeah functionality versatility it's just amazing it's beautiful it's the classic it's the original it's quintessential hermes <sighs> it's fantastic i think we've seen a little bit of a uh, influencer situation at the moment where yeah a few of the bigger influencers i think in the fro tamara i don't know there's quite a few of them aren't there that are using the 35 or the 40 as their travel bag and yes i mean how amazing this is sat on top of their beautiful louis vuitton luggage and yeah they're wheeling this around in Heathrow or wherever they're going and yes of course it looks incredible doesn't it it's very functional you can fit all your things in it but I for one would not be wanting to cart this around with all the things that I travel with it would be incredibly heavy cumbersome because you can't put it on your shoulder also I don't want this being shoved anywhere it's not going to be shoved under a seat on the aircraft it's not going in the overhead locker so for me unless i'm traveling in the uk i've got other bags the neverfull the doville even the book tote is a little bit lighter i don't know i wouldn't use this that much for travel but i see what people do because it's very instagrammable isn't it i mean i think that's the only reason the influencers are doing that it's it's a sort of thing where we are seeing that whole bigger bags are back for me they've never gone anywhere they never will go anywhere I know the micro bags and the mini bags have been in for so long. I still use big bags, small bags. I just I just use what I like. I don't care. So there we are. There they are the three. In a nutshell, all three are amazing. What is my conclusion with all of this? Well, I adore the 25. It's light, it's still fits such a lot in for a small bag. It's easy to get in and out of. It looks incredible so many compliments when i've when i've ever used this particularly because of the color i think just oh i absolutely adore this bag it is not the most practical i wish the handles were bigger it's the only thing i would change about it i wish the handles were bigger the 30 it's just the most beautiful all-round beautiful bag i can't really fault it it just gets slightly heavy but of course all bags do of this sort of size particularly if you start filling them i adore the 30 it's just it's just incredible the 35 now i love the aesthetic of this that big slouchy bag you can style it with so many different things i absolutely adore the 35 it's not my favorite it's too heavy it's too cumbersome you're not going to use it every day when at times you do want to be a little bit hands-free so it is out of the three i think it's my least favorite Ugh. yeah i think it's my least favorite but i love it and i'm very 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 fortunate to have all three i know it's really easy for me i am very fortunate to have all three and because i have all three it's very easy for me to review to contrast them to decide which one i prefer using that day and i can swap from one to the other i know how fortunate i am but if i could only have one it would be this one because it is an all-round if i was just having one the first one i got 
was a 30 because I just thought I may only ever have the opportunity to have one Birkin. And because of that, I have to choose the one that I know I will use the most. And it is a 30. It is a 30. What you should do is entirely up to you. Which one is best for you depends on what you're going to use it for. If you're thinking you just want the one, and you want the all-round practical bag, then the 30 may be the right one. Because for you, it can be evening, it can be day, etc, etc. If you are wanting a bag that is purely and simply for the evening, or just you literally don't have to carry very much, then maybe the 25 is for you. Because you don't care about being hands-free, you don't need to carry too many things. And actually, this one is a bit too big and a bit too, you know, a bit too heavy, maybe. So that's a little bit in between. That's neither one thing or another for you. This is better. For those of you who want to use this for work, put files in it, put laptops in it, or you do want to travel with it, maybe this one isn't quite big enough because it doesn't fit all your things in it. It doesn't fit in a laptop, etc. So again, this was... This one's a little bit in between and it doesn't do either function for you. So for some people, this is the right one. What I'm trying to get at is which one is the right one for you depends on you. Don't choose the one that I like. Choose the one that's the best for you. Work out the one that you think is going to get the most cost per wear, the one you're going to love using, the one that makes your heart sing. If you adore the Birkin 25, get the 25. Don't go for a 30 because you think it's easier to get. Don't scratch the itch. We all know what happens when you scratch the itch of something and you settle for something that isn't the exact thing that you want. So don't let price, resale value or hard to get or all of those things cloud your judgment. Just go for the one that you know in your gut is the one for you. So I hope this has been some use don't bother watching my other one it was absolutely horrifically terrible however hopefully this has been some use if you want to know anything more if you want me to do some more in-depth reviews please let me know and other than that i will see you in another one